So today we're out here at Wakefield Park with Simon. You may recognize him from his Thompson Motorsport YouTube channel. And today he's letting me have a drive in his Formula V. Uh, so Simon, how do you feel about this whole sort of uh, setup? Yeah, I feel pretty good actually, uh, especially after the, all of the work that uh, you and JK Ferro did to get the car uh, where it is today. Oh, I, I thought it was a good way to say thanks for all of that work. So. Uh, yeah, I feel good. <laughs> yeah, well, Simon, just with the under tray on, he got 0.8 of a second better per lap, um, and he's qualified this car at, what, 10.8 seconds? Yeah. Yeah, 10.8. So my current goal is to get into the 115s. Well, I'm sure that some of my viewers probably think that I get to drive race cars often, it's actually quite far from the case. It's a very rare experience for me to actually get to drive one of the cars that I've designed the Aero Kit for. People pay me to design their aero, they don't pay me to drive their cars. In fact, this was only the second time I'd ever driven at Wakefield Park. So I was really looking forward to seeing how the performance was like in Simon's car. While I was waiting at the start line, Simon informed me of the first peculiar feature of his car, which was going to be one of many that I'd experienced throughout the day. Being a carbureted car, something that I'm not really used to, it fouled the plug at low revs. So you had to basically keep the car constantly above 2000 RPM uh, and make sure that the plugs didn't foul. And then for the first outlap or two, you generally had very hesitant power because the plugs had to sort of defoul themselves. Once I was out in my first session, we encountered the first problem with the car. Simon is a little bit shorter than me, not by much, but just enough that with his seat in the car, I couldn't actually change gears from third to fourth. The seat actually blocked my arm from being able to move the gear stick far enough. So as a result, for later runs, we had to pull out his seat. Uh, the net result of this was I actually ended up very bruised on my right hand side, but I got to drive a race car so it's all good. In general, Simon's done a really good job with the ergonomics of this car. The pedal box, for example, is perfect. It's super easy to heel and toe in. The brake pedal feel is as solid as a rock. and whole unit just feels super tight and well put together. The steering is also nice and communicative. It's actually not as heavy as I'd expected, but it weights up nicely in the corners. But the gear shift on the car is really, really not good. It's got a lot of slop in it and it's very hard to find the gears correctly. And as a result, throughout the day, I spent a lot of time mis shifting, which cost me a lot of my faster laps. It turned out I also wasn't paying proper attention to the shift lights, which meant that I was shifting a little bit early. Uh, one of the peculiar things about Formula V is that it doesn't really have much power at all. Uh, so there's not a really distinct power drop off. So I was shifting where I thought the power drop off was occurring, but when we looked at the log data later, it turned out that I actually had another 500 or so revs that I should have been using before shifting. And this was costing me massively down the straights. Unfortunately, we didn't check this until my runs were all over. As I was sharing the car with Simon's dad for the day, I had one three lap warm up session then three 10 minute sessions to go as fast as I could in the car. On the whole, Simon's car was very forgiving and easy to drive. However, I noticed from an early spin I had in my first full session that it liked to be caught early when it started to oversteer. So when I made that correction and started catching it earlier, I found I was able to go a lot faster without any problems. Another interesting thing about having such low power is that conditions where you normally go to light throttle on to get the weight transfer right and settle the rear end, you actually end up having to go full throttle to try and get that rear end planted, which I thought was quite an interesting thing. You still have to modulate the throttle even though it's a low power, high grip car, but it's kind of different throttle positioning to where you normally expect. One of my favorite corners was this corner because I could actually feel the work that I'd done. Uh, as you turn in, you could start to feel a bit of steady state understeer on the car, but if you held a near constant steering angle as the speed increased, the front end would slowly grip up as you got more and more downforce, which was really, really awesome to feel. Each session, I was dropping quite a few seconds off my lap time as I got more familiar with the car, starting off with a 124 in my warm up session and eventually finishing with a 115.8 in the middle of my final session. I then struggled to string together a clean lap that I got all the gear shifts right on and then ultimately ran out of fuel. I was pretty happy with getting within 5 seconds of Simon's time. Let's look at a lap comparison and see why I was so much slower than him. Just on the straight alone, I lose about 0.7 of a second. That's before we even hit turn 1. From a combination of poor exit from the final turn and also the gear shift issue previously mentioned. Because I'm going slower, I actually end up braking later than Simon for turn 2. 
but I overbrake. I end up too slow through turn two, and that really costs me on the run down to the complex over the hill. From the G-Force pots, you can see I am on the grip threshold like Simon. However, my lines are far more conservative, and I don't use as much track. In turn two, I completely missed the apex on this lap, while I did hit the apex on other laps. And there's various other points on the track where I could be throwing the car in faster and using more track. I don't actually lose that much time from Simon over this whole sector here because I'm carrying quite similar cornering speeds. Although I could definitely carry more speed through the final turn over the hill and use a bit more curb all around. I lose 5.5% on Simon's time in this sector. Coming down to the fish hook, I never really quite worked out the line. I end up using this kind of terrible line where I cut in way too early and that cost me seriously in cornering speed, which then means that my run up through along what's essentially a long straight is very slow. The lack of power in Formula V is actually incredibly unforgiving if you aren't exiting corners as fast as you should, as cornering speed makes a huge contribution to speed and lap time down the straights. When you combine this with my poor gear shift and poor engine revving issue of before, you can see I'm a lot slower down the straight. This sector is my biggest loss to Simon, being a massive 11% slower than him. I then break at pretty much the same point as Simon and the same level, but then through the corner, I again over break and then take a very poor line through the final turn, which cost me down the straight. My shift actually cost me more than my poor corner exit, as I'm only 4k's an hour slower after the corner, but 11k's an hour slower after the shift. So, we've just finished up for the day. Uh, the car ran out of fuel in the final session, so it cut my final sessions a little bit short. My fault. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I managed to get a 115.8, so I'm super happy about that. Managed to hit my target lap time, and even though it's five seconds slower than Simon, which I'm sure he's super happy about, uh, I'm really happy with, with what I got today. Uh, the car felt awesome, you could feel the aero at work, there was tons of grip there. Uh, my lines were super messy, but you know, what are you going to do about that? Uh, so yeah, thanks Simon for letting me have a drive in your car. No worries, only too happy. <laughs>